very warm welcome to yet another session of the real deal uh, a forum that that where we talk about talk very openly and candidly about a lot of real issues together with our senior management um, and and today's real deal is today's topic for real deal is is on mental health um i think personally this topic is a very critical and very relevant one uh, right particularly given whatever we have been all witnessing in recent months with so much of chaos and so much of you know things changing all around us and i think it's great that we have we are starting a conversation on this today uh, together with uh, nisa and and also amit who is a doctor himself and uh, a specialist in this domain and uh, and also the founder and ceo of uh, inner r uh, for some of you who who may not be like you know fully aware inner r is an organization Uh, in india which which uh, delivers mental health care through technology right so firstly nisa and amit thank you so much for for joining us today uh, for this conversation uh, right thanks before so we get started thanks thanks nisa uh, before we get started i just wanted to hear from both of you uh, right as to you know why is this so close to your heart and and what does mental health uh, mean for you All right i think it will be a it will be great if you can share some share some thoughts on that and maybe you first need that um so now i think mental health to me means really your well being right and it's the same thing as your physical health so you know are you you know not well well or doing really well correct and i think we can see that in our physical health we can see it in our mental health and i think uh, it's important to me for you know some of my own personal learnings and experience uh, with dealing with my own uh, mental health and secondly i think it's very important in terms of a organization uh, perspective that uh, you know an organization is as healthy as the people uh, in it so you know especially as we go through covid i think one of the critical things for someone like me to focus on is you know how are people doing are they getting the help uh they need right. and uh you know taking care of both their mental and physical health that that's a great way to put it nisa and i think it it, it resonates uh, a lot uh, one also here from you amit and and particularly given your journey right where where you you actually uh, you know were practicing in the uk and and then you know from there to inner heart right what's been your journey and you know what really drives you to 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 this this field first of all thanks for having me here shobna and isha i think this let's just take a step i would like to take a step back and give a broader perspective of my journey and and contextualize the conversation a bit right so if i really think about it i went to medical school wanting to be a surgeon right and and really got hooked on to the idea of having conversations with people which most surgeons at least at that time weren't doing literally cutting and i i used to start my day at 6 o'clock in the morning cutting and finish at 9 9 o'clock in the night cutting and so that was just of no interest at all after a while so so i i i got hooked into mental health by working for a not for profit in delhi uh, sort of uh, soon after medical school and 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 once i started so I, that's what got me started thinking about training into it when when i moved to the uk to train in in, in psychiatry and the magic i saw i mean this 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 sounds a bit this, this sounds a bit uh, uh, uh like i'm fantasizing it but the, but the, but the magic i saw of people who really could function right so because when you start when you start fact training in, in in any medical field you go and end up working with the most severe and the spectrum because you are the junior doctor on a ward in a hospital which by definition has the most serious uh, severe patients the magic i saw of people who came in not being able to eat or drink or are very disturbed because of their thought processes or just not being able to motivate or function themselves function at all and with the right treatment with the right support getting back to full functioning whether and when i say full functioning whether it's it's, it's to do with their, their their family life whether whether it's uh, it's it's to do with uh, their their work i just i, I was just i mean i spent the first 18 months just being amazed right and then it began start becoming more normal and and so and and then i realized the, the dichotomy of the of the two worlds i lived in the, the social world i lived in and the professional world i lived in where there was just no understanding of this in the in the social world i inhabited uh, whereas in the professional world i lived in i saw this magic happening every day right so one of the big drivers for me since then has has been how do i take this conversation and mainstream it 
right? Because right. the reality is this is this is a one in four problem, right? One in four of us at some point will have a mental and difficulty in the, in our lives that will requires uh, that professional support. But the conversation just doesn't happen to that extent. So how do we mainstream the conversation? Tell people that this is just like looking after any other part of your body, like Nisa said, and that that help is available. Help works, and it it, it really right. is not worth suffering for years and years at end before you get that help. Essentially, right, right. I think it's it's very powerful, Amit, the way you put it. Right, like it's it's obviously one thing that like what you realize, but you know when you when you find purpose and you know wanting to kind of drive that conversation forward and mainstream it. right it it kind of drives drives to a very different extent right uh, i just want to build on that a little bit uh, amit because i think one of the basic questions that i wanted to start off with is that before we dive further is is mental well being is a term which is sometimes not fully understood by many of us right uh, there are several connotations to it there are several meanings we attribute to it right for example like you know sometimes we think that it's about being happy all the time right or you know not getting affected at all or you know just just being about it's about being you know holding back our emotions all the time uh, right and i think it's important to clarify that understanding up front so that we can all kind of be on the same page as we go along in this conversation so in your experience right and you touched upon it but how would you define mental well being so i think well being is really the ability of one to be able to function normally and i put normally in quotes here because your normal is different to my normal right so wherever right. my normal gets calibrated by myself if i'm not able to perform at that level of functionality as an individual then there is then there is a difficulty that, I've, that i'm not at the state of well being is i think that's that's just not my definition is is who definition right now the individual realizes his own own ability to uh, uh, to work at full potential across all aspects of their life right relationships work uh, family uh, personal development happiness right it's it's now not being able to function across those spheres optimally because you're not feeling great right so so right. the function the lack of functioning optimally is a big big uh, defining factor and it's not the and just to be very clear just because you're not happy doesn't mean you're mentally ill just just that this is starting right. point right so that that's uh, that's very very important to recognize the opposite of opposite of depression is not happiness is vitality right so it's it's just just to understand that 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 distinction so and it's very very important to be able to express ourselves their emotionality is very very important holding back emotions being flat is not about being mental mental well being being able to express yourself is key to happiness in some ways right, right? and and and, and yeah. whatever that expression might be for you but that's different for different people right? so 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 yes right. so, so just being able to function normally and normal is what is normal for you is what i describe as mental well being essentially right I think that's a great way of putting it, Amit. And I think what really resonated a lot is that it's very specific to an individual, uh, right? And so, mental well-being is very contextual to each, each, uh, and every individual, uh, right? I think that's that's a great way to put it, uh, right? Um, Nisa wanted to, you know, ask you. I think you have you've spoken quite a bit about, and you mentioned as well now about your experiences with, uh, you know, mental health challenges in the past, uh, right? could you share a bit more about you know your experiences your journey and and you know, what you went through uh, right yeah thanks thanks shobna for asking i think uh, you know i often share the story that when i sort of joined the godridge group i used to have a table that had to face a window because i would cry quite often out of sort of uh, frustration but i i don't think i've ever sort of you know maybe in smaller groups but not fully shared um this story so i think as a child i was always quite an intense uh intense sort of uh child but what started happening sort of in my early 20s um is what you know i think amit talked about which is this losing your vitality correct you don't want to get out of bed you have thoughts where you know the world is totally empty and there's nothing for you uh, sort of in the world um i think i somehow managed maybe to fake it a little bit so i would get out of bed even though i didn't uh, feel like it but uh, you know you're just about functioning you're not functioning at a sort of your normal level or a level that you should and uh, 
you know, at that time, my father said, you know, maybe you need to uh, meet a doctor. There could be, you know, very, and, and I'm lucky to have him because he didn't make a big deal about it, correct? And he said, you know, I've read that the medication, simple stuff that you can take. I think what Amit said, you can, you, you know, this is not the, like you go to a doctor for something else, you could go. So at that time, I had gone actually to a psychiatrist. Um, they diagnosed me as bipolar. So it's, you know, bipolar is that you, it's, a, it's obviously a spectrum, but that you'd have depressive episodes and then you'd have, uh, you know, the opposite, which is uh, extremely increased vitality. I, in hindsight, think it was actually a misdiagnosis uh, at that time. It was probably just clearly uh, depression. Um, and I took medication for about six months. Unfortunately, the medication didn't really work for me. And I think that maybe came from the mis, uh, misdiagnosis. So some of the issues continued. And then actually a friend of mine suggested that I see a psychotherapist called uh, Udayan Patel. Unfortunately, uh, he passed away maybe seven or eight years ago, but he was uh, sort of amazing. And I did quite a few years of therapy with him. And basically, you know what cognitive, although he was a bit Freudian, and he, he had a mixture of stuff that he was, he was doing. But uh, talk therapy, I think in some cases can be as effective as drugs. I think there's data out there. Obviously, in some cases, you do need the medicine and you need a mixture of thought therapy. But talk therapy sort of really worked for me. And uh, it, it, it sort of trains your mind. Uh, it helps. And maybe Amit can you know, maybe mention how it uh, works more eloquently than me. But it can help you. Uh, it can help you with your thinking, correct? When you go into I, these episodes or something that's happening, you know, it made me realize that you know, sitting in a bathroom, crying by myself, that I am not actually alone, correct? This is my brain chemicals, whatever, sort of uh, uh, doing it, and it it changed my life. Um, initially, even though you know, my father was very open about it and supportive and stuff. My parents said, why do you talk about it so openly, correct? So even in a family like mine, that's very liberal, very open, uh, there was a little bit, uh, you know, how are you branding yourself or what are you telling other people? So I think that's also an issue uh, in, uh, in India that, you know, why is this any different than having, you know, I have high cholesterol I've uh, tried through diet and exercise to manage it. It didn't work. So now I take a statin, correct? So in the same way, if I have, it, it, it's the same thing. So I think um, my experience, I think like Amit talked about, is magic, correct? That you can actually have these challenges and with the right help from doctors, with support from family, from friends, you can overcome them. And I think, Shobna, I've been lucky because I got so interested in the mind and how it works, correct? And then you sort of work yourself out to what Amit calls your normal state. Then I started reading about positive psychology, right. correct? What is the opposite? What lets, the, what lets sort of human beings flourish? How do you build your uh, right. own energy? But... Yeah, I, you know, I share my experience more to like what Amit said that, you know, what did you say, Amit? One out of four of us or one yeah, out of five, absolutely. one out of five one of, of yeah. us will have that. And there's, you know, there's no shame in my game. Like we all go through these things, correct? So absolutely. if we can just honestly tell ourselves or our family members or if someone else is going through it, just acknowledge it. If we reach out for help, the tools, technologies, the doctors are there to help us. Shobha, I just wanted to say a couple of things just on what Nitsa just yes, said, right? Please, Amit, please. One was the, what really resonated with me was that over the last 20 years, both individually and as the teams I've managed and run, we've seen so many high performing individuals struggling in private, right? And, and that's, that's been, that's been a constant theme of, of 
somebody who is seemingly uh, be very high functioning, even whilst they are really struggling uh, emotionally or, or mentally, uh, but, but they were still put all their energy to the four, five, six hours they had to be out or they had to be performing or they had to be uh, to be delivering and then come and collapse, right? And this is, right. this, and so one of the things that often you often hear is, oh, he doesn't look depressed or she looks fine, right? And, right. and it's, it's, it's very difficult to not, to pass judgment without really knowing somebody's story as they have, they are living it. So, so, Absolutely. so most people just go through life without recognizing that the person next to them is really struggling. Right. And, and, and so right. that, that's the one. And it's, it's and I, I mean, I, I obviously can't name names, but really high functioning individuals from all aspects of life, right. Whether it's, whether, right. It's, whether it's the arts and theater, whether it's the, the, the business world, whether it's the medical world, right. I used to have a separate cabinet in my office in London, where I was just full of the doctors I was seeing. Right. So because we didn't want to put them on the system because they were all working in the same hospital. Right. So we, we would have a right. separate cabinet for the doctors we would see. So 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 it's, right. it's just a range of people. I think the second thing is really around the the, the, the initial bit that Lisa talked about, talk therapy, right? The, the science has become very interesting, right? It's gone from being mumbo jumbo to being very technical and scientific now to 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 the point uh, uh, to the point where you're now seeing in some brain studies that the structure of the brain starts changing with the right kind of therapies. So we obviously knew that there is some brain chemical changes that happen with medication, but now you're seeing changes in the brain with therapy itself. So the physical right. aspects of the brain, not just, not just how you think, but start changing when you, when you have been undergoing therapy and then changing your behavioral patterns. So one of the, one of the things that Nisa talked about and touched on was, was this idea of cognitive therapy, right? And the idea that right. your thoughts, your actions, and your emotions are all interconnected. So how Absolutely. you think, affects how you feel and how you feel affects how you act and how then if, so let's just say yeah. that as so let's just say i don't feel great right so if, uh, I, th I think i'm crap at what i do it doesn't make me feel great so i do less of it so it reinforces the fact that i think i'm crap at what i do and then, then that right. vicious cycle sets in and it's a downward spiral so at some point what a, what a good therapist would help you do as an example at a very basic level is break that cycle and then right. try and re re rewire your, your thinking process uh, or or uh, so that your your emotion your uh, emotions can be rewired then and then gradually your actions can be rewired and the way to do it is by starting well, most people is by starting to rewire your actions because that's the ones that are most easily in our control thinking and the thoughts and, and emotions are very hard to control but actions are something right. that we can push ourselves to and that starts rewiring bits so so what I'm trying to say is that whilst a lot of people think this is vague and this is but it's actually become very scientific. There's strong evidence base around it. The studies have become extensive. So, so I would really encourage everybody to start thinking about getting help. But Amit, have. your brain everybody. is also brain. Your brain is also a muscle, correct? It can change. It can be molded. Correct. The idea of the yeah. growth mindset versus the fixed mindset is that we are not where we started. Um, and you know, right. to your point about uh, the number of people going through stuff. I've always really find, find it interesting. I mean, I can't tell you the number of people I've actually sent to therapy, not just to therapy, but to my sort of uh, therapist. And it's very interesting because showing your vulnerability actually is not, you know, people think, am I showing a weakness? Am I putting myself out there? But I think it's actually the strongest people who can right. accept that you can get better or you can move forward well, who are you hiding or what are you hiding uh, right. uh, from and I've seen that you know people when I've shared it sometimes have been surprised like what do you have to be sort of depressed right. about right. or whatever well it is what it is you know it's a chemical reaction it's, it's a relation no, like whatever I, and right. but, uh, you know I love this John Gardner quote Shobna which says that uh, we're built for the climb, not for our rest in in right. sort of the valley or the peak. And I love to climb, correct? Therapy, doing this work, gave me the tools awesome. that whatever the weather is, you know, right. I can I can face it, correct? And right. And and I think the more we can accept of ourselves, we can improve, we can work on ourselves. So yeah, I would encourage yeah. everyone to do therapy. So, I think I think that's 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 a really heartening conversation, you know, like uh, that that we just had, and I think it's opened up so many, uh, you know, uh, aspects, right? Like we spoke a lot about 
uh, you know, how, uh, you know, people, you know, there are many emotions associated, there are many connotations associated with, uh, with, with your expression, uh, right, and, and a lot of misconceptions. And then again, you know, there are the benefits of therapy. I just want to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, the, the whole bit where we spoke about, like, you know, how people perceive it. Uh, right. And, and, and both you, Nisa and Amit, both of you mentioned that, you know, often while we all know there is a lot of things going on around us and probably a lot of people are going through, even at a time like this post COVID, when we know that a lot of people are going through, I think often there is a lot of judgment and validation, uh, you know, that, that happens. Uh, right. And I think somewhere, and, and like Amit, like you mentioned, a lot of people, you know, just spend so much energy in just putting that, that phase up. Right. And would just, you know, probably come back home and collapse. Uh, right. And and I, I just want to unpack that a little bit more, because I think somewhere at the root of it, uh, of all that validation and second guessing and judgment is, is that we're always trying to look for a standard set of symptoms uh, or, or causes. Uh, right. That may be at the root of it. Right. Like like you mentioned, uh, Amit, that, you know, like, uh, you know, he, he seems he or she, she seems happy. And so they may not be, you know, they may be doing fine or, you know, the other way around or, you know, she may be doing great uh, at her career or, you know, he may be having a great family. And so they may not be, you know, uh, depressed. And I think because of that constant validation, we and when it doesn't fit into that mold, there are often conclusions that we come to that, like, you know, the person is actually imagining it uh, or, uh, you know, being too, uh, too uh, you know, is, is whining too much. Or you know is is not is is weak willed uh, you know and so on, right? And I think that's that's a very important uh, aspect to address because for everyone it's different and everybody's uh, drivers and how they express are, are all different, uh, right? I, I I'll just start by saying that you know I I I have now been doing this for twenty and different different capacities for nearly twenty years now, right? I I started my mental health journey in two thousand one. So it's coming up to nearly 20 years next year, right? And 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 I've 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 run large services, which means that as as a volume, we've seen large number of clients over the years, right? And and I can what I can tell you with absolute surety is that it's it's a range of conditions that affect all socioeconomic groups, all all gender preferences, uh, all all all, uh, uh, all age groups, right? And, and, in, and in different ways and and within each group they affect people in different ways right so and 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 within within each condition they affect people in different ways now let me put some let me put one number on it right I'm, I'm not a big fan of numbers because they try to sort of mask the story but let me put one number to this right that that, that if depression was a country it'd be the third largest country in the world and if, 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 if number of people were, were all depressed were put into one country that's that's how big that country would be right so there's about 600 million people we're talking about so it's huge Right? And, and, and to expect that all these people will be impacted in the same way is ludicrous. Right. It's just the same way that you wouldn't expect everybody with high blood pressure to be impacted in the same way or high cholesterol to be impacted in the same way. Everybody with depression does not get impacted in the same way. Because The only reason why people struggle is because there is no easily accessible biomarker. Right? There's no blood test or, or there's, no, there's no instrument you can just put on your body and say, okay, and, and that's also changing gradually that people are looking, testing biomarkers for depression as well. So the only reason why people leave the subjectivity to acceptance, uh, that I am allowed to judge whether you might be depressed or not. Uh, I'm, and I mean, not as a professional, but me as, as, as the person next door is allowed to judge is only because there is, there is lack of awareness and lack of, lack of sort of well-defined biomarkers in the layman's term. In, in the professional world, the very clear uh, di diagnostic instruments you apply as tests to, to understand whether people's symptoms are above or below threshold to diagnose them. Right, but but that that the the, the, the layman is not uh, uh, sort of aware of, and so they apply their own sense of or ex, or understanding of the word, and so then they pass the judgment. And all that does, frankly, without being too negative, is really impacts the openness in conversation. Right, well, right. so people are less than less willing to have these conversations. And I'll tell you what, what Nisa just said that putting yourself out there is is a is a very brave act. Right? And I'm not just saying right. it's about this right now, but but gen more generally also, anybody who's willing to stand up, right, and and talk about right. their own mental illness or mental illness within their family that they've lived with, is is, is a huge service to to, uh, to to everybody else around them who's just very scared to speak up, right? Uh, because right. the reality is, you look around you, the, in, in a room of four or five people, at least one person struggling, so, so right. and and in, and in their own unique way, that's the, that's that's I think right. that's the point you're getting at, right? It's not it's not there's not 
while the symptoms might be through defined set of criteria, what's overtly visible might be very unique. Right. Maybe very very no no completely agree, uh, uh, Amit. And I and and I think you know it's very important because what it does to the individual, right? When when that's the kind of reaction, uh, which which Nisa also mentioned, I think it's very important because and if I were to talk about just you know just my own experience, right? Having been through a bit of a journey on this myself, uh, I remember when when I had first opened up about you know that that I was not feeling okay and you know like I'm I probably need help and you know I'm not very sure if I'm I'm depressed or what. I, and I'm very blessed that I had a very good support system, but there were still voices around me, which, which you know, were more like, you know, oh, why are you being so weak? Or, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, why are you being so immature? Or, you know, let's not exaggerate. Uh, if we can't even face this, then, you know, how about other things in life, uh, right? And, and I remember what that did to me at that point, right? Because like you mentioned, it's, it's not easy. Of course, there have to be more conversations around this and it's important to open up, but it's actually very difficult as well. To, to make that first leap. And when somebody is actually making that leap of faith and, con and, and trust, but the voices that they hear around them have a big impact uh, at that moment, right? And, and I think it can make that person go into a big, big shell if, you know, it's not, uh, you know, if, if, if those voices drown, drown that, that person out. And of course, I was very blessed to have the right, you know, support system uh, around me and I was able to help my way back. But and hence completely resonate, uh, right, with with what we what we are talking about. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit more of recent context to this, right? And we've spoken about how it's obviously impacted uh, people a lot more post COVID, right? And and both you, Nisa and Amit, have been interacting with a lot of people, right? Both like Nisa, you've been talking to a lot of people within the company, and Amit, you've been you know talking to many many people outside uh, in general, right? Uh, how do you think COVID has actually made this this issue far more aggravated uh, in recent times, right? And what are some of the manifestations of how COVID has really, uh, you know, impacted people far more uh, in terms of mental health in recent times to both of you? Um, so, Abna, yeah, I think, you know, and, and I think as human beings, we want to know what is next, what is certain, what is happening. And I think this has just thrown everything out of yeah. whack, correct? I think some people can adapt to it better. I think for you know some people it's easier than it is for others, but everything is upended right now. So right. I assume that for even people who were doing okay before COVID, uh, you know, we'll see a number of new issues uh, sort of uh, creeping uh, creeping up. Also just the fear of disease, what's going to happen next, my job. I mean, there's just so many things. Um, and then I think, you know, I know, I, I mean, I definitely know a few people have got, who've gone on to anti-anxiety medicine at this time. Maybe not directly related by COVID. Something was already happening and uh, uh, you know, then COVID sort of pushed it over. And, you know, people are wary of medicine, correct? Will I get addicted? Will I need it? But I know at least a couple of people who, you know, gone on to the medicine for a month or two, it's really helped them sort of bring right. them back to equilibrium. And then they've sort of been able to manage. I think the worry also, Shobhna, is for people who had pre-existing conditions, right. both those who were addressing it and those who were not correct? Because those who right. are addressing it, but they're not able to get out, maybe they're not getting the therapy they need. Maybe, you know, there's other impacts. And those who were not addressing it or not acknowledging it, uh, you know, uh, I don't have personal experience with that. Maybe Amit, you know, right. I, I've not spoken to anyone uh, like that during this time, but it, it must be uh, very, very sort of uh, distress. I mean, we are going through a once in a hundred yeah. year, you know, if you ask my dad who's 78 years old, have you been through anything like this before, correct? Because he was around during World War II and the Pakistan-India war. And he's like, no, this is, this is the, you know, and it's not the moment of our lifetime in a positive uh, way, not to yeah. mention. Yeah who our political leaders are and all, but I won't go into the stresses of all that, but we are living through a weird time. So right. Amit, Amit will give a smart no, answer. No, it's, 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 no, 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 I, I think you've covered actually, you, you, 
you hit the nail on the head and, and a few a few of the aspects i was going to talk about one is around uncertainty right and 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 how is really impacting people right uh the the not not knowing what what tomorrow will bring whether it's about your health whether it's about your job whether it's about your finances whether it's about your relationships is if you didn't if you didn't have a really great relationship with your spouse or your family before being locked up for a long long periods of time with them is not great for the relationship yeah the where 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 this right. escape was important so so we're hearing about incidents of more 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 uh, sort of uh, interpersonal difficulties some 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 more domestic abuse uh, domestic violence incidents going up in, in incidents of substance misuse going up because people are using using substances like alcohol and 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 uh, to, to sort of uh, help get through to get through this time so so all of that's happening right and and then and and isa talked about people with pre-existing conditions and people with people with new uh, originated conditions both struggling for different reasons right? the other thing is that a lot of people have been isolated right uh, because for some of, some people coming to work and coming to the physical environment was the only social interaction they had for 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 days right. days days at end so a lot of people are actually feeling isolated are, are more isolated now the loneliness has gone up there's there's huge amount of caregiver burden because you now have a significant jump in household responsibilities whilst managing work from home and and that that balance got screwed so there's lo- there's lots of stuff that's happening burnout's creeping up we are seeing i mean we are as an organization we are seeing almost 3 to 4x uh, of 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 engagement and utilization uh, for psychological support than we were seeing sort of let's say february march time to now so it's it's definitely gone up right i think one of the things within that is a sort of slight silver lining is that more people and more organizations are now talking about this right this this is not going away as a problem right and and, and uh, you, there, there's this old joke about saying we keep saying something but 20 years you'll eventually be right at some point and i think this is my time to be right uh, but th- this <laughs> problem is not going away right so th- because right. because this is this is uh, people are really experiencing it now in in more obvious ways and because other people are talking about it because organizations are talking about it uh, right uh, whilst your organization might have had open conversation before we've gone to organizations in the last few months who have had for the first time conversations about mental health openly right? and that has really given people the courage to come out and seek help right and, and so so that's right. that's that's the sort of silver lining to the whole context i just wanted to touch on one thing that nisha talked about which is on medication and myths right so so the real, real there's a whole whole myth around medication that gets built up nobody will ever question the idea of taking a blood pressure tablet or a cholesterol tablet if you if if your doctor writes on a script he won't even tell you what it is right you just you you right. go there you look at your blood results and say okay you need to start this tablet and you take this tablet twice a day and 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 you just take it right you will not even question right. you take the tablet and you let it but the number of myths that gets that surround mental health medication right is insane and if you think about it, and and uh, and because i i used to work more more in a more specialized way with people were over the age of 65 and that means that in general more sensitive to any medication right so i used to work very very closely with my medical colleagues my which used to be cardiologists and physicians and they used to joke joke with me saying that the side effects that your medications produce are not even 1/5 to 1/10 of the stuff we give to people right so so the so in so for, for a lot and that's not true for all medication but for most medications the side effect profile is no different to what you would get from a lot of other medications that you would take for your health and right? so that that's one thing Secondly, the idea that every medication is addictive, right? So people just get hooked on the idea that if I get on it, then A, it will mean that I'm weak, that I couldn't manage on my own, and B, that I'm not going to be able to get off it. Both are not true, right? Uh, you you right. can't just will your blood pressure down. You can't just will your cholesterol away. Absolutely. Even though somebody on this call right. has tried it with, with all sorts of tools in the last few months, you can't will your cholesterol <laughs> away. You if where you have to take medication, you have to take medication, right? And and so similarly, you can't will uh, what is really a, an, an illness. right if if you if you've got a depressive illness if you've got an an, an anxiety disorder you can't will it away you can will away by positive exercising and 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 routine changes some degree of low mood now that's different to being depressed as an illness right feeling low right. for a few days you can you can manage that through 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 and we'll, we'll talk about some strategies in a minute you can manage that yeah but if but for an illness you need medication and and all the myths around it are just counterproductive because i've seen it so many times it it takes almost 6 years in india as an average for somebody to first experience symptoms to get on the right treatment right so so the average time to yeah. it's called it's called duration to treatment right. is 6 years basically 
That's insane. Yeah. Think about living with high blood pressure for six years before going to a doctor. So that yeah, that's right. how long it takes, and that's only and, because these myths get keep getting perpetuated. Essentially. Yeah, and Amit, what people are doing is, you know, when we're on medication, another thing that I've seen, you know, you talked about things like alcohol, or you know, these these habits which sort of dr- try to drown out the pain and the thing. I think another thing to watch out is if you're taking sleeping pills, like what is happening there but because i'm not a doctor maybe you can comment on it but my experience is that people who are taking a lot of sleeping pills like is there something else that's underlying that would be better treated with another medication and talk therapy or whatever not to say that people don't need sleeping pills in some situations but to me it's always uh, something that i've noticed on just on sleeping pills i just say this one thing right it's it's one of one of the, the uh, one of the biggest challenges in 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 the medical world has been the abuse of some of these prescription drugs right and and uh, and and and, uh, and taking them either without prescription or over the counter or taking them beyond what's been prescribed uh, or and sometimes unfortunately not being not being prescribed correctly right all those things have really contributed to pretty much a, a large epidemic of of uh, of misuse of, of 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 some of these medications essentially and and my strong advice is that if you need a sleeping pill it's got to that for needing a sleeping pill you need to go and talk to somebody first right because they, because as nisha said there are a number of reasons why your sleep might be affected right and there, and there could be some serious phys- physical reasons including sleep apnea and things like that which could be dangerous right the need you need yeah. to get diagnosed and and treated for because yeah. they could actually be quite quite seriously that like they could put you at risk seriously yeah. uh they could be because of psychological conditions right uh, yeah. they could be because of other things that you not be managed to pinpoint i i saw somebody in clinic uh, maybe going back about 10 years ago who had not slept well for 8 years then it turned out they had chronic back pain which was which had, they had become so accustomed to that is just right. a cure and actually what 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 was required for 6 months was getting their back okay and then they slept absolutely fine but because they had this pain right. for 6 to 7 years they just got used to the pain and never connected the pain to the sleep problem Uh, right. so so, right. so 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 the, 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 the sleep can be multifactorial and sleeping pills are one set of drugs that have huge addiction potential right uh, and, and most good physicians and psychiatrists only prescribe them for short periods of time uh, and and in very rare cases judiciously for longer periods of time so if you have to take sleeping pills right. uh, then you need to go and see somebody and get the right advice right right i think i think uh, amit and isa i think from from this discussion around like you know pills and and medicines i think the most important takeaway is that it's important to be as practical about mental health issues as we would be with you know physical uh, health issues right uh, and so if if there's something that's wrong in my body i would i would mostly most certainly go and speak to a doctor or like at least talk about it to someone that you know i have a pain in my head or you know could it be a migraine or i have a pain in the stomach i think that taking mental health challenges with as much seriousness and dealing with it with the same lens of practicality is is very important and of course if we go to the right areas of help the right experts then obviously that the that the treatment will take its own course whether it's talk therapy whether it is medication right the way we would you know uh, we would deal with uh, you know the way we would treat say blood pressure or cholesterol right and i think i think that's that's very important and i think it it's also important to to do with the same way even for others um, right like for example if somebody were i think it goes back to the point of validation right if somebody were to come and tell me that like you know hey you know i'm not i'm not feeling too well i got a headache or i got a uh, you know a, a pain in my back uh, we don't tend to validate it all right but but we tend to validate uh, some of these other things right so i think it goes in, in both ways it has to be treated exactly like any other uh, physical ailment right so completely resonate on that I think yeah. and the one, other point and one thing shobhna about this uh uh you know about these times is i think uh, doing the talk or cognitive therapy is very right. easily done over video correct so from the right. privacy of your own house without the effort of having to go somewhere so that's another right. it's literally you need to reach out and make an appointment correct we can do it through in our hour which uh, we offer it through but you could also do it independently you know uh, yeah uh, but it i i think it is just getting on to a call with someone yeah yeah no absolutely uh, nisa and actually on that note i i wanted to just talk a little bit more about uh, you know i think we've touched upon a bit about the benefits of you know therapy how can we help ourselves etc right uh, but want to start 
with with you nisa right even before therapy right what are some of the given your own experience during lockdown and what you've observed in interactions with other people right what are some of the basic steps that we can start taking to you know take better care of ourselves be more kind to ourselves uh, right and and help ourselves uh yeah i think uh, you know shobhna for me and you know my experience on this sort of journey from d- depression to you know trying to uh trying to flourish i think and and i think that journey for everyone is different correct so what works for you sort of uh what doesn't i mean for me it's really been the physical also interacts with the mental both ways correct if you're depressed you're not getting out of bed it's going to make you physically not feel well so i think for me it's being as disciplined as possible so you know eating as healthy as possible making sure uh i'm exercising uh every day trying to be present so you know not on my phone all the time spending time with my children present not having social media on your phone because you can waste a lot of time on uh instagram and finding things like you know what amit said when you are low or when you have those low days what do you uh what do you do correct during that time and you know maybe don't even be so hard on yourself correct that you're not right. in your most sort of i found that reading a book or learning something new always makes me feel better correct uh Right. so i i try right. to do those things sometimes switch off from work correct just put the right. phone away close the computer do not uh uh reply to right. reply to anyone and just seek help so now so you know during the during the lockdown i actually heard this harvard professor called nancy kane give this amazing talk about how you show up for your organization and your family correct and i was like oh you're back sorry oh. yeah hey ni sabhi lock you for a bit you were talking about okay. uh, yeah yeah That's so okay. i said you know as we went and i was talking about this harvard professor i heard her speak and you know i was like wow i should speak to her you know and get her to coach me because maybe she can help me uh through this time and give me advice because you know if anyone says they know how to lead during this time it's a bit crazy because <laughs> who's done this before so i think it's i think it's okay you know at least for me i think it's okay to say i don't know everything uh but every day i will get up and you know learn something new and try something new and i'll keep myself disciplined because that's what helps my mental well being so now the other thing is i'm an introvert so this sort of a situation mm-hmm. probably you know this work from home and i can just be with my family <laughs> and not right. ha- it's it's you know so i i you know i take my experience with a bit of pinch of salt and i have staff helping me and stuff so i would uh you know i'm right. probably right lucky right. that that my personality no. is suited to pandemics <laughs> no but i think very relevant themes uh, that that you have spoken about uh, nisa and i think one of the things that resonated a lot is that like you know when you said it's it's okay to feel low right? it's obviously it's it's okay to admit that we are going through a hard time and it's it's okay to feel low right and i and i remember that, that there's, there's this book that you had also recommended uh untamed uh, book right where yeah, i think right, there was a very right. interesting reason, right where feelings are meant for feeling so it's yeah. it's it's okay to feel the way we are feeling and there's no need to be apologetic uh or you know overly inhibited about the way we are feeling we just need to be able to deal with it and i'm sure you know we'll be able to uh you know regroup ourselves and yeah. and the other thing that that you mentioned nisa in terms of taking time off work i just want to add to that just based as my own experience and maybe it doesn't come to naturally to me i think it's also it's important to switch off from work but at the same time it's also important to as boring as it may sound to have a bit of a plan around what am i going to do during that time off right it may seem like a very small thing but it was something which needed no effort earlier because there was always you know things to do 
you know, go out, uh, you know, travel, meet someone, etc. But I think it requires a little bit of conscious effort as well now to, if I'm taking a couple of days off, what am I, how am I actually, what am I, what do I want to spend my time on so that my time off doesn't end up looking very similar to a regular, uh, you know, day where I'm just stuck with, uh, you know, too yeah. many devices and the, yeah. the routines of the day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I mean, that's that's very important um, as well. Um, Amit wanted to hear from you, right? Because obviously these are all very powerful and, and these are like atomic habits and, you know, very small things can add up to a big impact overall. Uh, but at some point, at what point do you think after trying all of this, do does one realize that, okay, the issues are probably far more deep rooted so and, and thereby switching on the light and coming correct so i look like i'm sitting in a dungeon i'm just coming sorry go yeah, ahead sure. yeah so I'm at, the, at what point yeah. does one no. realize that yeah. this is not working still and so you know we need to reach out for professional help i think i think a good benchmark to think about is a couple of weeks right i see you go for a couple of weeks and think these things are not i i i was not feeling great i was feeling a bit low i was feeling a bit anxious uh uh, be, being a bit nervous and, and and it's now been a couple of weeks and I've tried a few things and it's still not worked. That's one benchmark to think about and from a time perspective or it's got so bad you can't function. Right? It could be just three days but you're really starting to function. Then there's no time frame for it. Right? So then that's yeah. how I look at it. Either either you say I'm, I'm struggling a bit and it's carried on for a couple of weeks right? and my functioning is getting affected or I, 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 it feels really intense in a short period of time and I really need help right now. Right? In both situations, it's really about saying I need a bit more than I can do myself. And, and right. accepting that, right? So I think that that's that's and, and and that's the time to get help. But if you're asking from a clinical perspective, I would I would put a, a couple of weeks as a reasonable window, saying anything beyond any any sort of uh, sort of negative emotions or or or, or 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 behaviors that that carry on beyond that, you should really think about getting help beyond that, right? So, and, and and that's how I would put it. I think there is a, there is an interesting thing that you you mentioned about judgment, right? And 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 at that point, the first thing that people turn to uh, when they're thinking about getting help is, is, is family and friends is the first step, right? And and, and, and more often than not, for, for the younger population, family or friends first and then family probably. And and, and, and it's, it's very, very important that as a first step, we are, as friends or as family, we are present in that conversation. And what, what, I, what I mean by that is that that you're listening, right? And 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 and, and right. we, like, we can have an old whole session about active listening because because a lot of us get trained in that uh, professionally. But but so that so you're actually listening to what 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 the conversation is and, and doing active listening is actually being non-judgmental is very important. It's not important what you think or feel about the issue, right? It's the other right. person's time. The other person has a stage, and it's very very important what what they are going and through, and then you give them yeah. Go yeah, on. and it's not important if we understand it or not, right? It's it's no, their no, zone and it's yeah, their yeah. space, right? Completely. Absolutely. Uh, I think I think also important to respect their privacy, right? They they have they have choices. Just because they 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 told you something doesn't mean that you have to then decide to solve it for them and go and tell five people because you you now have the information and you think that will help them and then no, it, and even if that right. you think that might help them, you have to respect their privacy uh, unless you think somebody can put a risk and that's a whole different conversation. Uh, and don't make it about yourself, right? Don't, don't, that is not the point when you start telling somebody, listen, this is what happened to me also. That's the time when you just have to give a listening ear at that point, right? So that, right. That, that, right. that's very, very important. And finally, don't make promises you can't keep. If you say you're going to show up, Nisa was talking about Nancy Kane, but if you're going to say you show up, you show up every day. And I cannot, I'm just, just going back to that conversation Nisa was having in, 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 at work, in leadership, but also in, in family life, in relationships, and to yourself. I cannot overstate the importance of just showing up, right? They right. are doing nothing more dramatic than that. Just, just, just Absolutely. because we talked about, if you remember the cognitive trial, we talked about, about thoughts, uh, emotions, and, and actions. An action. Showing up is, is a critical action that can help right. start helping to rewire the rest of you. Right. right? And, and Nisa right. talked about showing up in different ways right. and, and whether it's with, with this maintaining a routine or whether it's exercising regularly. Uh, right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm seven and a half kilos lighter than I was six months ago. Right. And, and uh, it's just, it's just, I, I, I've been the, the most disciplined I've been in 15 years. Essentially. Right? So, so just the, 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 one of the things that's really helped me get through this is the idea of just showing up every day. Right. And just, and just saying, okay, whatever right. happens, things are stressful, things are busy. I mean, we've been busier than we've ever been. We've been, working from home for the last six months as a team and 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 it's important for me to show up for them and to show up for myself every day right and and that i cannot overstate the importance of that and that and the impact right. positively that can have on your mental health 
and your team's mental health basically right yeah. right yeah and i guess and i and I, just to clarify i was also sharing that example because maybe as an introvert how you show up is not always the most perfect or it's difficult and i said but i can work with someone and i can change this so i think therapy is the same like there's nothing in the world that if we just reach out for help correct and we don't have to do it by ourselves i think right. our capacity to change is boundaryless correct just if we believe that and we reach and don't try and always do it by yourself correct right so, right yeah. no no absolutely uh, nisa and amit and i think I, i think amit one of the things that you mentioned right like showing up right which you also spoke about nisha nisa showing up for others i think it's a very powerful point that you made that like you know it's not about solving it for others right it's it's just about being present and listening right sometimes even with the best of intentions right like when when a friend comes and opens up uh, to to me uh, I, i of course want the best for my friend but i sometimes think that okay he or she is expecting me to also give a solution uh, right mm. but it's it's actually not about that it's just about being present and just being there uh, right and just just being there and listening uh, right and and yeah obviously means i completely agree on on your points on you know how therapy can really help uh, you know yeah. I, and women should not really need to show up for themselves also correct because right you know this idea which in untamed we read about this selfless woman who is you know at the uh, right. selfless for you know her children and family and selfless for the organization we have to give ourselves oxygen but you know you right. have to be your best self uh before y- you can inspire be the best mother so i think taking i remember telling myself i don't have time for exercise how can i exercise i have work i have children it's 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 a story correct you can make time if you really want to take care of yourself you have to right. be able to prioritize yourself also it's very right. important right. i think it's 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 a great point is i think self care uh, is is very important and a lot of us sometimes uh, feel justified in not doing uh, that uh, right and it's, yeah. it's it's something that that we definitely need to do do better i've done so i've done a few of these events in the last 6 months with the, with the harvard professor uh, called shaker saxena who was, was was the who head of mental health for a long time and we've done them together and he he has this great analogy of saying you got to put your own oxygen mask on first So we yeah. have the, the same thing now with your health mental health and he uses all he uses all the time and then i's now become repetitive to me but but uh, but i think it's it's really apt uh, because and 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 i'm going to take a minute and talk about women right and 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 in this in this social cultural context uh, there there is idea that has been sort of passed down generations and we've seen it with clients now for for, for a long period of time this idea has been passed down generations of what my self of self of being has to be right Right. Is, is can sometimes be really counterproductive to your your mental health, right? And 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 so it's really it's really really, really trying to and it's it's not easy, right? So it's very easy to pontificate about that, but really trying to step back and saying, regardless of what what it has what it needs to be, what do I want it to be? Yeah. And what what do I want my sense right. of sense of being to be rather than what it needs to be or what what I have always been told it has to be because. I think right. what you realize is, and 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 I had this, I had this fantastic uh, professor at uh, when I was doing my residency used to talk about things. You will converge; those things will converge as you get older, right? The the, the and the, uh, the what you want to it to be and what you need it to be, or what you've been told it needs to be, right? It will converge as you grow older. But the sooner you act on it consciously, the convergence becomes faster. So, and what I mean by that right. is, the sooner you start thinking about consciously about, okay, what do I want from from my day to day? from my for my week to week for my year to year what do i want what will be my the best version of myself for myself so that i can be the best version of myself for everybody else uh, if, if that's what even if even is being if, if yeah. it's also being selfless even if you, the, the your aim, aim is right. to be selfless you cannot be but selfless why should you be you the, but amit why should you be selfless right because being selfless is not it's not improving your life and then it won't improve people i think the idea of giving oxygen is imagine the life you want and lead that not lead and this book talks right. about it so you know women and men should read I, it I, but I, don't I, live from indoctrination i gave shweta a copy so maybe you shweta is amit's <laughs> wife and a very good friend of mine so that's how amit and me uh, know each other no, but, but, but I, just just to just to ask that question i am not saying you need to be selfless i am saying that yeah. even if your idea of 
being used to be selfless in the social cultural context even yeah. then you cannot even be selfless i mean even yeah. if that's what you choose i mean yeah. see it's not for me to judge whether they're that's right identity sure. for you or not sure. right so sure. even if that's what you want to be you can't be selfless till you have till you have decided what you want what you want for yourself yeah. right yeah because, right yeah and, and that's where I mean, so absolutely i'm i'm not yeah. defining i'm not saying anybody should be selfless i'm saying yeah. that that's where you want yeah. to be yeah and that's yeah and you amit know? on the same sorry shobna i'm like okay no, go on I, go but on. on the same thing i think my insight is on men correct they are also just given a hard time because you're told you're a boy don't cry correct and in this yeah, indian context so i think that's even harder in a way right. correct so we should acknowledge that also that for a you know for a man to cry it is being human correct and we should all right. be human and our feelings are here to be felt so it, 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 they're not here to be denied to be put away with alcohol to let violence come out in some you know so right. it, it's so i think we should encourage we should you know we're talking about women on but even equally men like i would right you know encourage more men to feel what you're feeling and it doesn't make you weak or less of a man actually it makes you you know the word courage means to come from your heart it means that you have right. the courage to come from your heart and not your indoctrination so yeah for right. both genders and just on, just on that right this statistically men present men present to care and services a lot later uh, and, and and there's no clear there's no real evidence to say that men have lower prevalence of mental illness but 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 they they present a, a lot fewer and lot later to mental health services and a lot of times uh they have more adverse outcomes and things go terribly wrong uh with men in this country because they don't present, and actually that's, that's to globally actually they present much later uh to, to to actually seek support and that that it may means that they hard it's harder to treat because uh, patterns have been set up and you have now rewire brain networks that takes a lot more effort and and secondly sometimes it's uh it, it requires a lot more medication it, it, so and and sometimes there are adverse outcomes that that cannot be then uh, that yeah. uh, there are more final and and indefinite so absolutely agree that that okay. uh, encourage more men to seek support earlier uh, uh, and it's 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 not weak it's not weakness at all yeah and i think amit especially now especially with people who have children and teenagers and you know we're seeing one out of five the levels of suicides and things are going to go up correct so we need to be sort of vigilant also about ourselves and people around us correct and this i think this sushant singh rajput's uh you know the case the way it's been treated is just horrifying correct it worries me that you know instead of talking about sort of mental health with sensitivity this has become like a media uh, circus so i just think it's also given covid we should you know be vigilant about ourselves and what's happening around because sometimes the outcomes yeah. can be very 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 sad and devastating it's it, it's a it's a crisis on a crisis Absolutely. on a crisis right let, yeah. let me just put three yeah. years a bit so in india has in india has one of the highest rates of suicide in the world right yeah. uh, suicide is the, the top one or two causes of mental uh, of suicide in in young men so 15 to 29 is the highest cause of suicide right so that is the highest cause of death in in is is suicide essentially in in our in our country and and that's one crisis uh shekhar again i'm quoting the same prof again from from howard talks about how evidence from previous pandemics suggests that uh, you you will see a five times increase in psychological morbidity over the next five years but post the pandemic right so yeah. there's the immediate impact and the longer term impacts on on the mental health of populations uh, post pandemic and then the second and third Media media reporting around around suicide is 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 a, is, is a yeah. hugely important thing because there is clear science and evidence around things like copycat suicides and and how it it sort of it 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 it, it uh, sort of discourages people from seeking help and 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 taking a sort of more final and fatal op- op- options uh, uh, when when they can't cope. So so and and there's clear science around it, right? So 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 all when you start reporting suicide in this way, it actually impacts the suicide rates in that population. so yeah. me- the mental health prevalence and suicides already prevalent in this country you know, in, a, in a large number not, not very few of them are linked to, men- to mental illness by the way so only about one quarter or or one third of suicides in india are linked to mental illness right that is one secondly the pandemic is going to create a spike anyways and third the the media reporting is not helping so it's crisis on a crisis yeah. on a crisis right now so i i think amit the like you know the, the way the pandemic has impacted all of us and you spoke about like you know the range of issues 
it's almost like you know it's impacted every one of us in 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 some way right and there are there are major ramifications uh, of that in terms of how it impacts us right because and it's a very important point because some of us have this question in our minds that like you know who's supposed to be feeling the impact uh, of covid uh, right and the answer is that it's it's actually impacted all of us in in very different ways uh, right and and so it's it's obviously something to definitely watch out for uh, right completely agree and and the other point that you know it really resonated the, the way you mentioned about like you know the the whole point of like you know giving yourself an oxygen mask i think it's it's it definitely takes a toll it's impossible to exude love care uh, you know for people around us if fundamentally you know we are not in a in a good space ourselves uh, right and it, it eventually catches up all right so a fundamental principle for like you know really to be able to care for people around us our friends and family is to first kind of you know be in a happy space and do whatever it takes for us to kind of get to that 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 space uh, you know ourselves uh, you know, completely could, couldn't agree uh, more uh, right um nisa wanted to just just build this point a little bit more right on on how we care for others right which we spoke a lot about how we how we need to be sensitive to others specifically in the context of us at work uh, right how can we be more sensitive and how can we care better to our team members our colleagues right because uh, you know we're all working from home mostly you know digital connections we've lost uh, you know the, the human connection in a lot of our interactions and uh, you know we're not fully aware a lot of times of what's actually going on uh, right with everybody's lives right so so how how do you think how are you thinking about it um i think shobhna to me right now i think communication is sort of really important um uh, you know it's very hard actually on these videos to know fully sort of what's right. going on um uh, i found you know and it wasn't something that i did as consciously but i am trying to ask people if i message them or they message me how are you correct now most people will just say good or fine but occasionally people are saying you know i have this uh issue or this has happened or not so sort of good i think you'd given me this idea early on though i don't think we've implemented it but can each of us look out for one person in the organization and sort of right. check in with them and see um how they how they're doing so i think on an individual basis or as a team leader is making sure you are staying in touch with people reaching out to them you know asking them what's happening and and not everyone wants to share correct i have some okay. people who work directly with me and it's like obviously they don't want to talk to me about how they like doing i try to joke i try to it doesn't work correct <laughs> so i guess they also need um uh my brother always jokes he says maybe what they really need is a break from you so don't like force yourself <laughs> uh on them but i think just being more sensitive being more empathetic uh you know and reaching out to people is what what we can do i think as an organization um you know we have like in our hour working with us we've had another company uh also in the past who offers this uh service i think as hr we are you know watching amber chats and the continuous listening feedback more closely to see fault lines to you know and it's not just mental health it can just be work but burn out and stuff but i think the most important is uh for us to all be having conversations and you know we are in a very different world right now so maybe uh we need to the way we communicate and the way we come uh on these video calls and stuff uh needs to be more sensitive and more of a check in no absolutely just uh, make a point about i was just i was just going to make one point about negative interactions right so when you just talked about how to interact with people positively right but i just wanted to make a point about negative interactions because we i mean one key tool and it's it's an off used word but but the whole idea of empathy and 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 really being able to really try it it's an effortful thing it's not an actual thing people say i'm empathetic or not it's it's a, it's again and it's it's a muscle you develop it over time right where you 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 develop your empathy muscle by practicing trying to put yourself in the other person's shoes trying to imagine their circumstances right it's even more critical right now than ever before and especially when leadership roles it's very very critical right now because 
different personality styles is a fantastic hpr article about it right now the different personality styles will cope with work from home very differently right, right. so the, the, so the, uh, sorry send me this okay. article on the reader i will uh, and, and 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 uh, uh, yeah i know that's all right so so yeah absolutely so 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 they, they'll work differently so that's one one is the empathy tool right Psych- especially if you're in leaders roles and so that you understand what the type of person is that you're managing or leading and how is work from impacting them right so if it is it's somebody who's very organized for example likes to tell their manager that i'm going to take a two hour break at lunch and go to do my work at the bank then for them work from home is very difficult because what they like to do is compartmentalize their their work life and home life right they, they, and so then for them now everything is happening in the same in, in the same space and in the same time the kids are doing 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 homeschooling it's all very difficult somebody who's who's absolutely comfortable in in normal times to take a call at 10 o'clock at night and then and then sort of compensate for it by maybe showing up late at work and then still working very well but sort of being more flexible around it they would probably adapt a lot better to work from home i'm just generalizing a bit but just giving you a sense of two very broad types of people who might react very differently to this scenario right the other thing is how can you actually do a disservice to people right which and which is sort of easier to cut out right so so and and, and you know uh, the the negative interactions might be four or five types right discouraging the expression of feelings is one which is a very very important one so so whereas you 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 actually discourage the the expression of feeling making critical making making critical remarks invading someone's privacy interfering in somebody else's affairs right and failing to provide promised help so so all these are four or five things that if you just thought these are these are the negatives if you so as a, as a starting point if you just cut out the negatives be at a baseline and then start adding the positive from empathy perspective then you could really start adding value to your team as a leader essentially and so so i absolutely think that cutting out the negatives is the easiest part in some ways uh, because empathy is very hard and it's a muscle that builds over time but but the cutting of negatives are actually sort of a more tactical approach that you could take to sort of supporting your team right and amit one yeah. other thing during this time that i been trying to do um is that if you've had a tough discussion with someone or it's been a tough meeting and you've gone after something or the other which you have to do at this time are you making sure that you're having a side conversation correct sometimes on whatsapp happening someone in a friendly way during the, so it's also because people can't read really what's going on on the thing you might miss because you can normally tell from someone how they're looking or how they're taking so are you uh you know or as a leader are you saying look i'm sorry to be being tough on this but this is why i'm doing it so it's not about them but sort of the issue so i think like you said the we have to be more sensitive and more uh, aware and i think also if you can encourage feedback from your teams uh because sometimes you just don't know okay like shobhna remember that i sent an email to the strategy team which i thought was like perfectly fine and uh you know i'd actually and now i don't send my emails during the night so i put them into uh, send them in the morning or don't send on the weekend um and you know the head of strategy called me and he said you know or messaged or he called me and said you know that was very discouraging and you know these people are not motivated by so i called them and i said you know i'm really sorry i didn't i didn't and i really didn't mean it correct but so right. if you can make right. sure people are giving you feedback then you also have an opportunity uh to apologize if you didn't mean it that way so right i think right. The, so i have started seeking it very so i used to do i feedback myself once a year i do it once a month now yeah. uh just just as a benchmark that's awesome. right? so i should and, do that and, i haven't done right. it and and uh, right. sometimes sometimes i feel i shouldn't <laughs> but but, yeah. but uh, given the amount of feedback i'm getting right now but but yeah so but it's, it's great because right. because there's so much happening right now because each see if you think about the difference right now right each conversation that's a very good idea is in a gender driven conversation now there are there are no there are no light conversations typically unless you really make yeah. an effort each conversation is a gender driven conversation so the opportunity for the informal feedback has gone down significantly and i just i wasn't in my idea we just had this this uh, this guy from wharton he's like we should you should do a more regular pulse survey and i said okay let's try it out and i didn't expect the volume of feedback and it's more very critical that i got back in in the first one we did so we now we're doing it more regularly i think it's it's, it's yeah. really powerful Amit, because we do this it, it, continuous learning which is very good where you keep pinging people for feedback and yeah. you know i also launched this thing called emerge stronger app where you ask a question and people give you feedback so on a business issue anything you want to ask about 
Oh, I have not done this once a month personal feedback to myself, but I'll. I'll just started I'll it. I did it twice now, and it's uh, it's it's uh, yeah. it's only just started it. To add, add, uh, and right. I didn't I didn't expect the volume of it, but it's been very helpful because it also allows it. It also allows. It's, I think it's also cathartic. Right for the team that works exactly, for me, yeah. so for them it's also a, a, an opportunity to some sometimes something that they would have said to me on my face if I was in the office with them. Uh, there's the opportunity now they'll just say it this, right? So that that's also right. because right because Amit, I just wanted to you know I was exactly going to say that because a lot of times even when like you know things are not going as well and you know you want to share it, I think just when when somebody reaches out and there's an intent to solve it, that is half the. you know the problem solved in itself uh, right because it's it's obvious that there are a lot of moving parts there are a lot of things you know we are all juggling a lot of uh, uh, things and so but it's the intent uh, which counts and is there an effort to kind of move and and kind of make steps in the right direction and, and i think that that makes that that's of course the right thing to do and i think it also makes a big difference uh, you know for you know for for example if i were to share a problem uh, whether the problem is solved or not the fact that like you know somebody here heard me out and like you know promise that they would take some some steps to address it and is actually doing it makes a world of difference to how i feel uh, right and uh, so i think that's that's I'm a very valid point sorry sorry nisa you no i said i'm sorry for the email again but i'm saying <laughs> no no nisa that, that's that's really nice okay. of you to so yeah but but i think uh, it It's a great gesture. Uh, yeah. It's okay, Shobh. Now we can move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it's been a great conversation, uh, right? And I think uh, we've spoken about many different aspects and unpacked different aspects of mental health. We've spoken about uh, things around health. I think at the bottom of all of it is that, like you know, how can we be more sensitive to both ourselves as well as to others? Uh, right and and it's the effort that counts uh, and of course we're all kind of trying to understand more about ourselves as well as the people around us and uh, you know uh, and i think it's a journey but it's it's the kind of the intent and the effort uh, that matters and it's it's been a great and a very heartening conversation and i and i think this is more like the beginning of hopefully many more conversations to come uh, right any any closing thoughts uh, nisa and amit I actually had a question, Chobna, for Amit. Just in closing, um, Amit, yes. if you can just tell us a little bit about what Inner R does, and you know how Gojejites can access it, and that we also have availability for family and stuff. So, if you can just maybe spend a few minutes on, you know, uh, you know, why are we work? The reason we're working together. So. Sure. No, absolutely. And let me just take. Did we take one step back and just. Uh, Talk about why we exist, and then we can we can talk about uh, what, sure. what we do. And yeah. and see, the idea really was going back four five years. Now the idea really was to create a platform where people could get standardized psychological therapy. When I when I moved back here to India, I realized that whilst people were getting some people were getting access to therapy, it was also very variable quality, right? And and what people did in those sessions was very very variable compared to where the science is around what should happen. that is the most efficient and and meaningful impact in people's life so the idea was to really build a platform that gives people access to sort of more uh, standardized therapy experience uh, and 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 deliver that right what we learned we had over we had over 100000 conversations in the first year and what we learned was that the first step and this this shouldn't have been a surprise but but it wasn't that intuitive for me at least that in, as a first step people don't want to go and talk to somebody Right as a first step, and that's all health behavior, right? Even if I have a headache, I want to just solve it myself. I have a stomach pain, I want to solve it myself, and then if it doesn't go away, I'll go see somebody, right? Similarly, if I'm not feeling great, I don't want to solve it myself. I want to use uh, some strategies of self care to see if I can figure this out, and if not, then I'll go. I might go see somebody, and that was an overwhelming feedback from like over a hundred thousand people, and we had a huge data set that told us that. So what we built after that was really saying, okay, can the standardized therapy be be uh, delivered by individuals? can we now use james clear's ideas of atomic habits and and a lot of other people stuff around around sort of uh, micro habit formation and looking at psychological strategies and can we create a program that's individualized to each person for their condition and 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 delivers to delivers to them uh, the uh, a, a sort of a, a psychological learning program and habit formation program over the years over, over over a few months so what you get as a user now is is you get a program that's personalized to you Around and it's largely based on cognitive behavioral therapy, 
and then you can set goals you can track your moods you can do you can uh, you can talk to a chatbot when you when you're in distress there's a number of functions around it but it's all self care without a therapist uh, without a therapist and then you still have the optionality to go and speak to a therapist on video voice or chat and book a session and do that right so so with, with godit for for a number of employees now we're doing that we're giving them access to uh, to to therapy sessions with uh, with our with our therapists who are all uh, sort of trained and highly qualified and we i think we extended the offering to three family members or three dependents as well along with uh, just, so you you on the app you have the option of adding three dependents and then they get access to the same offering the same self care app all the paid and free elements of it and uh, and and the and the therapy sessions so the idea is really to provide a a self care experience that is evidence based scientific and standardized but personalized to you because we ask you a bunch of questions and build our algo builds the program for you or and b the idea of then connecting with a trained therapist who will again have access to that data if you're using the self care program they'll know your goals they'll know your symptoms but then they'll also work with you as a client to then provide therapy and and this uh, lisa mentioned this but the evidence based around psychological therapy for things like mild to moderate depression mild to moderate anxiety is almost as strong as face to face therapy right so so uh, it's, it's, so we have access to both those tools uh, on on the platform itself and, and that's what we're delivering to 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 uh, i think we already had we already had people from godish taking sessions now uh, for the last few weeks uh, so individual sessions and the self care program are all available uh, and accessible to the employees we are working with right now and their family members great thank you amit thank you so much for your no, time on favorite. this and um, so yeah shobna i think my um, you know sort of uh, if i could leave people with it is that we're all in this together maybe our experiences are different but you know we're all in this together and you know if you need help a family need member needs help just get it because it can change your life uh for the positive don't suffer uh don't suffer silently and you know if there's you know anyone wants to reach out uh uh to me i'm here for everyone and you know people have reached out to me in the past i don't even share it with hr we keep these i think whenever these sort of things are shared it's kept really sort of confidential so if you know you're not you don't have someone at home or in family if you want to reach out to one of us we're uh, here for you and yeah we're together i think i i think i should said that i think all the help we provide is confidential we don't share it back with yeah. the hr team with go bridge yeah. and, and 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 it's really about oh, you and us. we actually we don't see we don't see it as well it's just between you and your therapist actually so it's really yeah. the information really between you and your therapist we don't even we don't access it so my last comment is going to be that it's absolutely okay to seek help right i've seen it change people's lives dramatically which is why i'm still doing this 20 years down the line right whether it's and the help could be either to talking therapies uh, or it could be to medication or both uh, and don't wait to get help because it, right. the sooner you get it the better your outcomes are going to be scientifically proven the better your outcomes are going to be the better your quality of life is going to be and the quality of life of people around you uh, and and life's not meant to be wasted so so seek help as exactly. as 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 soon as you feel that you need help something absolutely uh, nisa and i completely resonate and thank you so uh, much thank you so much, much. yeah thank you so much thanks amit thanks for having me my pleasure thanks a lot great take care bye thanks everyone bye. thanks bye thanks shobna thanks so much bye